1998 comes Bloody Roar on the PlayStation from Hudson Soft. Cute furry animals trying to kill each other that transform into humans also trying to kill each other. That is one weird ass roster of fighters in this game. Bloody Roar is a game I really had never heard much about until my friend Dan said, you gotta play this. So thanks Dan, now I have. And while this is not the best fighting game I've ever played, it's better than I expected it to be. And they actually made more of these. This is the first in the series. Choose your character from this group of mutant fighters who transform into animals. That's what makes Bloody Roar, Bloody Roar. Get it? Roar like a lion. Which is what this guy transforms into. A lion. I like that feature. It makes this game stand out from the crop of mid to late 90s fighting games, which are all pretty much the same. Now you've probably figured this out by now, but when your gauge fills up and starts flashing B, that means you can turn into a beast. Or a bunny rabbit, but that's one mean ass bunny rabbit as you'll see later. This is like straight out of the Thundercats here, we've got Tigra vs. Lion-O! The fighting is pretty straightforward and the game plays well enough on the PlayStation. I'm actually using the PlayStation 3 to record this. And while it's not a great looking game from the era, the combat itself is highly enjoyable and the characters are hilarious. It's Greg. Just Greg. No offense to anyone named Greg, but you think you'd want a stage name like Mikhail the crazy guy that transforms into a gorilla when he's drunk. Or just Greg, if you can't remember all that. Nice faceplant, Greg. You hit the circle button when it's time to activate beast mode, which you can even use as an attack if your enemy is nearby. It's actually fun to run at somebody and transform into a beast and tackle them while transforming. It's a good move. There's no doubt that Bloody Roar is cheesy, but since it plays quite well, I actually like the cheesiness. Moving, attacking, defense, and keeping track of your beast gauge are all far more important than memorizing lengthy button combos, so it's just a fun game to play. It's relatively easy to pick this game up and start playing it by mashing buttons, you'll win your first couple fights, but in order to beat Bloody Roar, you'll need to find some characters that you like and know how to use. After playing for a while, my favorite character is Fox, who is definitely bizarre. Seen here versus Yugo. The beast gauge or animal magnetism gauge or whatever it's called actually makes Bloody Roar quite interesting because you'd like to try to do as much damage in your human form as possible before turning into an animal which does more damage, but you can also be knocked out of animal form by your opponent. And then they can have the advantage and really kick your ass with claws and like sharp pointy teeth and stuff. And look, they have tails! What are tails good for? The only thing that tails do is provide entertainment when your dog chases their tail and then they get dizzy and fall over. That's hilarious. Get ready, fight! Bloody Roar, good times. Thanks to my buddy Dan for loaning the game. I'll get it back to you for our next Battlestar Night. And I would recommend this game if you enjoy fighters like Tekken or Soul Calibur or Virtua Fighter. It's good straightforward fighting with a twist. It's cheesy, it's silly, it teaches kindness and respect for animals. It's Bloody Roar on the PlayStation. It's also cheap and easy to find. We've been watching the arcade mode, but this also has a survival mode as well as the all-important two-player versus fighting. 
Invite some friends over and see if your bloody roar can drown out their blood-soaked cries of misery upon losing to your sharp pointy claws.